Promises still stand.
with a little light because today is the second Sunday in Advent and blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be called Counselor, mighty the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. And so we're going to sing to the honor and glory of God. All praise of the Advent candle. On this second Sunday in Advent, 
we remember John the Baptist who came to announce the coming of the light of the world. If we would walk the streets of the kingdom, we need light to guide us. We light the candle of hope so we might travel with trust in our hearts. This is the candle of patience and hope, reminding us to watch and wait for what God is about to do. If we would walk the streets of our world, we need a light to guide us. We light the candle of peace so we could carry it with us as we serve. The second can candle is the candle of peace and righteousness, enabling us to look at our lives, to get rid of all those things that keep us from God, to change our ways and live as God will have us live. As we continue our Advent journey, may God lead us into the future which awaits us, a future filled with hope, a future filled with peace. We now sing a candle is burning, a flame warm and bright to the tune of Away in a Manger. continue with our liturgy, second Sunday of Advent, found on page 87 in front of our Caribbean Moravian praise. I believe in the name of the one and only Son of God, by whom are all things. I believe that he was made flesh and made his dwelling among us in order to serve. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. He was born of a woman. And being found in appearance as a man, he was tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. He is the Lord, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. The Lord and his spirit have sent him to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He spoke of what he knew and what he had seen in heaven. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. They were born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or anyone's will, but born of God. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace and even more grace, gift after gift. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God at any time, not so much as a glimpse. The one and the only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. All be seated as we continue in prayer. O oh God, 
We are thankful for this Advent season in which we celebrate the divine mystery, God becoming flesh. Open our hearts and minds to grasp this truth. In Christ, the invisible God became visible. As we embrace this revelation, may our lives be changed and transformed, strengthen our resolve to this declare the same to our world so that we will be faithful ambassadors of God's kingdom. May your church throughout the world continue to be visible representation of Christ, reflecting his love, his grace, and his mercy to all people. With renewed commitment, we avail ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we declare to the world the glorious Advent message that the Prince of Peace has come. Help us to faithfully proclaim his return and the need to prepare for that second advent. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. There is an interesting balance in this. Since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so, so in Christ, in Christ all, all will be made, made alive. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all the dominion, authority, and power. For, For he, he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. When everything and everyone is finally under God's rule, the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, showing that God's rule is complete. This I most certainly believe. By your atoning death, by your rest in the grave, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, by your sitting at the right hand of God, by your sending the Holy Ghost, by your ongoing intercession, by your holy sacraments, by your divine presence, by your coming again to your church on earth, or, or being called home to you. Bless, Bless us, gracious Lord and God. Thank you. 
God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A hearty and a cool welcome to all. Welcome to this act of worship. And um, we do trust and hope that this act of worship will be a source of inspirations and blessings to all of us. If you are weary and have come to find rest, if you are grateful and have come to give thanks, if you are hurting and have come for comfort or solace, if you are listening and have come to pray, welcome. There are no visitors in God's house, only family members we have not yet met. If this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome home. We are always glad to meet new members of God's family. If you are seeking a church home, we invite you to make Ebenezer your place of worship. And saying that, is there anyone visiting us for the first in a long time? Or for the first time, could you kindly stand so we can welcome you the Ebenezer Estuary. Any visitors, kindly stand. All right, we, we have no, I see, I see some strange faces, right? But we, they feel at home. So let me welcome you all to Ebenezer Estridge Moravian Church. Is there anyone celebrate, celebrating birthday today? or during the course of the week, could you kindly stand so we can wish you a happy earth day. Any birthday celebrants in church this morning? We don't have any in church, but of course, as you see printed, we have um, Curtis Petty, his birthday is, is today, the fourth. Jaheem Watley on the ninth, and Lachlan Richards on the tenth. I know they might, some might be listening on Zoom. So we do wish you all a happy birthday. And we will also sing the birthday song for these birthday celebrants. Blessed to give anniversary. Sorry, any anniversary, any anniversary. I know this is wedding month. Any anniversary? Oh, yeah, we have Sister Diane. And Sister Diane, how many years are you celebrating? 29. Oh, wow. But all by yourself, or you have a partner? Today. All. today, today. All right, let's give Sister Diane. <laughs> Sing happy anniversary to Sister Diane.
Before I ask the pastor to pray, Pastor Charles Williams, my brother, brother was on the second son. He's right in church. Right? So. His brother was where? On the second, on the second. Yeah. So I don't invite you to pray for the anniversary celebration. <laughs> Let us pray. There are some persons who are celebrating birthdays as well who may not be in the sanctuary. Curtis Petty and Brother Lachlan Richard and Jaheem Watley. And so we ask a special blessing upon them and upon any who may be listening uh, who, who's celebrating. Also, on Charles, we wish you, uh, uh, I pray that you had a wonderful birthday and I pray that God will continue to bless you and prosper you and bring you into his purpose as you continue to celebrate many more years. And now we pray for the anniversary lady and her husband, Brother Andrew. And I hope that Giselle is listening in so that he can allow Andrew to hear. Also, um, Sister Diane is not by herself. <laughs> she is with Brother Andrew, but he's not in the sanctuary. Amen? <laughs> and so we want to pray a special blessing upon them. And we pray, Sister Diane, that God will indeed continue to keep you as that gel in the family that everybody run to, including us. And we pray that God will continue to prosper your business. You need to promote it more. The person who have me looking so lovely all the time is Sister Diane. Yay. She don't want me to tell people, but I tell it all today. It is her, so that she has a skill and a gift. And I pray that God will continue to allow you to use that gift um, so that it can benefit you in your home and your family. I pray that God continue to keep you, continue to bring you into his purpose, and continue to preserve you so that you lead your family and those that are looking to you as well. May God bless everything that you do, your hands, your feet, your head, and your heart, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So at this point in time, as we receive our morning's gifts and offering, we will repeat the offertory sentence together. Then after the senior choir will bless us as we wait upon the ushers. Let us read together the offertory sentence. This, this Sunday, Sunday we, we celebrate, celebrate the, the advent of peace, peace born for us in Jesus Christ. Christ. Think, Think of your gifts as seeds of that peace which, which we can plant in the world God loves for Christ's sake.
Amen. Thank you, Senior Choir, for reminding us that Jesus is coming soon. This is Advent season, a time of preparation, even though we are supposed to be preparing ourselves in all the seasons. Let us put our hands together for the Senior Choir for that time. So. Prayer of dedication. We all will pray together. The prayer of dedication. Let us pray together. God, God our peace and our promise. promise. Receive our gifts as seeds of gratitude for your gift to us in Christ Jesus. Bless these seeds with growth so that peace will take root in people who face conflict and danger and the places seeking to establish peace in the face of violence. Be their peace and their promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now listen to the written word. Our Hebrews reading is taking place from Isaiah chapter 11, reading from verse 1 to 10, and this will be read for us by Sister Louise Morris. The epistle reading, Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 4 to verse 13, and this will be read for us by Sister Joan Sargent. And the gospel reading, Matthew chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 12, and this will be read for us by Sister Gislin Brown. Good morning, church. Good morning. The Hebrew reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Please listen while I read. And there shall come forth a rod of, of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall go out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and the reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the, with the word of his mouth, and with the word of his, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And the righteous shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow of the, and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the bear 
and the suckling of the child, of suckling child shall play on the hole of the abs, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cock trees then. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our reading is taken from Romans chapter 15, verses 4 to 13. Here beginning. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may be with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the Father, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he said, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and Lord him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah said, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall raise, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent for ye, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is, for this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John and his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then he went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees came to his baptism, he said unto them, O generations of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to rise up children unto Abraham. And now also the ax is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand and will 
thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare ourselves for the spoken word, the praise team will lead, will lead us in some songs of preparations. Can we all stand?
Jesus reigned. King of Zion, Judas Lion, reign, Jesus reign.
God, sometimes the storms are raging. And life, Lord God, as it's twists and turns, everything seems to be upside down, Lord God. But we thank you that you still reign. Continue to reign over us. May you reign in our hearts, our lives, in everything that we do, in all our thoughts and our speech and our actions. Thank you, Lord, for reigning. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, you, O oh God, who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may, you may be seated in the presence of God. <clears throat> Advent is here again. The beginning of the church is year, because the church year doesn't begin January. Eh? It begins on the first Sunday of Advent. And we can easily dismiss Advent as unimportant. Some may even ask why we are focusing on Advent. They may say, why shouldn't you focus on, a, on, a, you know, on, a, on altar call and proclaiming the good news, or focus on preaching and prophesying? and calling people to the altar. What Advent you're talking about? And indeed, we are supposed to preach and extend the call for persons to give their life to Christ. But after the noise, you see, <laughs> after the excitement, after the emotion, we have to live in this world. And we need to live. If we don't know, about certain things, certain teachings, certain doctrines, then it would be difficult for us to even grow and walk with God. So it's important to talk about what Advent means. It is unfortunate that at Advent time we get caught up. By that time we've liked the Christmas tree. We get caught up with the Advent candle and the wreath and the Advent star, which is not lit, by the way. Our Moravian Advent star. Please light it, Sister Brown. Thank you. We get caught up in those things sometimes. In the rituals and the customs and the practices. Without realizing that these customs and these practices and so on, these rituals, can enable us to have a deeper and richer relationship with God. It can enable us to have a closer walk with God. So Advent arrives. And as Moravian, we light the Advent star, the Advent candles. We put out the Advent wreath. And sometimes we do those things without reflecting on what they actually mean and what they can teach us about God and about Jesus Christ. Because you see, why we may think celebrating Advent is a waste of time, Advent is a very important celebration in the Christian calendar because Advent is about repentance. And all of us need to repent. Advent is a reminder that Jesus is coming again, not as a baby, but as a king. And so we need to get our life in tune with him. We need to get our relationship right with Jesus Christ. So the Advent season should be celebrated. As Christians, we should take the time, this time of Advent, to take stock of our lives because Jesus is coming again. You hear the choir singing? You hear us singing, Jesus is coming again. He's coming again, not as a babe, but he's coming as a king. He's coming as Lord, he's coming as Redeemer. He's coming as judge. That is what he's coming back as, a judge to rule in his kingdom. We tend to begin to focus on Christmas very, very early. So early that you don't hear the Advent hymns. You don't reflect at all on the Advent season. One pastor says that we are making Jesus Christ into a premature baby. Because we start to celebrate his birth so early that poor Jesus is now premature. He's a premier. 
as Moravians, we celebrate Advent. And although every year I stand up here or the person stand here and explain what Advent means, this year I want to do a little bit more. I want us to reflect seriously on our lives. Our lives and our relationship with Jesus Christ. I want us to take seriously the fact that Jesus is coming again. So in all the hustle and the bustle and the preparation, the animals to slaughter, the house to decorate, the new curtains, and I need some new curtains this year. <laughs> and all those sort of things. I want us to take stock of our lives. Sister Alicia promised, as a board of stewards, cheer to get me some new curtains. Amen? Yes. As Moravians each year, we focus on Advent. This year I want us, I want to explain the four Sundays of Advent just shortly, and then I want to zero in on today, the second Sunday in Advent. As Moravians, each of the Advent Sundays focus or put emphasis on a specific idea. And that idea that can be seen in the scriptures that were read and also in the liturgy that was read. So you find that the first Sunday in Advent, which was last week, the readings focus on being ready for the coming of the Messiah King. And the liturgy, the liturgical service, we did not celebrate it because we were celebrating missions here. But the first Sunday in Advent, you will realize that the service begins with a grand praise, a celebration of praise. And in the booklet, Customs and Practices, which is written by Adelaide Fries, she says, the opening hymn, Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son, Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. Even if you look in your liturgy book, you will see that's the opening hymn, right? For last week. That was written by the Moravian, the English Moravian, James Montgomery. And so it has that, it, it strikes, it put a strike into all that will happen on that Sunday. And you find that that Sunday also, we normally sing the Hosanna anthem, that great hymn of praise. And last week, even though we didn't have um, celebrate Advent and had missionary, we sang the Hosanna Anthem. The second Sunday in Advent, which is today, is de dedicated to the second coming of Christ in glory to judge both the living and the dead. And so you find the Moravian liturgy for the day presents both aspects of the second coming. And you find that when you read it, you realize it was scripture, pure scripture, except for the prayers, you find that it, is, it really speaks about scripture. It's totally scripture in the second Sunday liturgy of Advent. The third Sunday in Advent, the focus of, is on Jesus and the work that he's doing in the world. His work when he was here on earth. That's what the third Sunday in Advent. And the epistle speaks to the importance of our deeds to humanity. Christ did work when he was here. We now supposed to be working and doing good deeds to others. The fourth Sunday of Advent, the gospel uh, really announces now that Jesus Christ, Jesus as Christ being born in the world and the epistle calls us to rejoice, to rejoice in him and to look for peace. In some Moravian churches, you find that the hymn Morning Star or Cheerful Sight is sung on the fourth Sunday in Advent and some churches it is sung on Christmas morning. So today is the second Sunday in Advent. And as we noted, the emphasis is on the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so you find that in Matthew's gospel, John the Baptist is calling the people of God to repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I believe we, we all know what repent means, to repent, what it means. If I were to ask you what repentance means, I would hear quite a number of definitions, such as turn from sin and dedicate oneself, amend one's life, to feel regret or contrition, 
to change one's mind, to feel sorrow, all of those. And some of you would sum it up and say to turn away from sin. Some would even add, turn away making a 180 degree turn and not 360. Because when you make 360, you come back to the sin. <laughs> and so, all of you would be right if you were to answer that. Repentance in the Greek language literally means change one's mind. Change of mind. It's not just to adjust your thinking. Because this repentance, this change of mind, is a change that begins in the heart. It begins in the heart. It comes from deep down in the soul, deep down inside of you. And so this change overflows, comes out of you, overflows on the outside. And so it is experienced. It is seen externally. This change impacts everything you do and everything you are because it starts inside and comes out on the outside. However, this morning, I want to point out that this call to repentance by John is twofold. It's twofold because it's clear in the text that was read from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, 1 to 12. In this passage, John points out very clearly that this call of repentance or this call to repentance is twofold. It's a call from something and a call to something. So you're being called from something, but you're being also called to something. You're called from a life of sin. Turn away, repent, turn away from sin. It is time to seek the Lord. It is time to turn from the patterns of life that keep you so enslaved in sin. It is the, it's the, it's the life that we have taken for granted. To turn away from a life that is just a Sunday morning worship and Monday to Saturday you do any old thing. It's a turn away from a life where we are doing the things that do not glorify God. Things that do not line up with the word of God. It is to turn away from living carelessly. Turn away from being a mediocre Christian. Turn away from just being there. Turn away. Repent, John says. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's near. The kingdom of heaven is near you, some translations say. The kingdom of heaven is here. You can touch it. It is within your grasp. It is right here before you. And you can actually reach out and touch it and take it and enter into the kingdom. Right here with you now, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's even here this morning among us. So what is this kingdom of heaven? Well, first of all, let me tell you, it is not a place. The kingdom of heaven is not a place. I know that many, when you hear the term kingdom of heaven, you begin to immediately envision that it is a place, somewhere to go. But the kingdom of heaven is not a place. The kingdom of heaven is power. It is the rule and reign of God. That is what the kingdom of, of heaven is. So wherever God is and is here this morning, amen, ruling and reigning as we sang, that is the kingdom of heaven. And so repent. The Messiah is coming and the kingdom of heaven is here. It's available to us to grasp, to touch, to enter. So repent. Turn away from your life of sin and embrace the kingdom. Embrace the power because that is the power that will enable us to live a life that is fitting for his glory and his honor. Embrace a new way of life. In other words, turn away from sin and turn towards God. We have to turn towards God, but it's not just about repenting. It's not just about turning away from sin. It is also about turning towards Towards God. How do we show? How do we demonstrate that we have turned toward God? Because you can turn away from something and turn towards anything else. But the thing here, John is saying, 
turn towards God. And how are we going to show that? How, that we are going to, how are we going to show that we have turned away from sin and turned towards God? John says, be a fruit of repentance. Be a fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, after repenting, after repenting of your life, you must testify to that life, that new life now that you have. The way you live must reflect what you claim. You claim you have repented. Now the new life must reflect that. It must reflect a change. Your mindset must now be a kingdom mindset. It must be clothed in the righteousness of God. You have to be holy, which is set apart. Not holier than thou, but now persons will know when they look at you, when they hear your speech, when they hear what you are sing, singing, when they hear, see what you are reading, they will know that you have repented because now your life is indeed new. Because the fruits we show and display, people will know. Repentance brings a change, as I said before, on the inside. And it will come out on the outside. And one thing about fruit bearing, once you begin to bear fruit, it don't affect people's lives. If a tree bear fruit, it will affect somebody because somebody going to either pick it, steal it, and eat it. Right? It can affect you positively or negatively if you keep it. But once you have fruit, it will affect. And once our lives begin to bear fruit, because we have repented and turned towards God, then you find that other people will be affected. Fruit that is worthy will show forth forcefully in our lives and others will take notice. Our attitudes, our behavior, our lifestyle, our speech, everything will change. People will be shocked, they will be saying, they can't believe it's just a person because you completely change, you're different. You're not cursing like you used to. You're not snapping off people's head like you used to. You're more peaceful, more approachable. People will recognize, they will notice the difference. And so when you bear fruit, it will affect others. And that will draw them towards you. And of course, eventually what? Draw them towards God. Some people will ask a question. How come she be like, he or she's like that now? And persons will be able to say, that person has turned towards God. They have changed. They now live for God. And they will, what may, it may draw them to want to also live like that. Or they might ask you, and you get a, a chance to testify of the goodness of God in your life. John pursued his task of preparing the way for Jesus with determination. He knew he was not the one, but he wanted people to know that one who is mightier than himself is coming. The promised Messiah. All John had to do was offer people the repentance of baptism. He offered them repentance to come and be baptized. But baptism was just the beginning. It was the beginning of another life, of new things, of different things. Because baptism in those days was a very common thing. If we, before you entered into the temple, you had to be baptized, you had to be cleansed because you weren't fit to go in. So you had to go and immerse in water and then enter the temple. You had to be ceremonially cleansed. Also, if someone who wasn't a Jew became a Jew, they had to be baptized to become a Jew into Judaism. So it was very common. Converts underwent, went under and got baptized. So what was John's baptism about? John's baptism was a symbol, of course, of repentance. It was a symbol of turning away from sin. And since John was preparing the way for Jesus, the people came because they knew of the promise, of the prophecy that the Messiah will come to rule. And so therefore, they rushed over to be baptized by John, to repent of their sin and receive the baptism of repentance so they could be ready for the Messiah, to receive the Messiah. John's preaching caused a stirring in the hearts of the people. 
His, his preaching reminded them of who they were, that they were the people of God, but that they had done things and turned away. And so as they were awaiting this deliverer, they were not being in tune with what they should be as people with God. And so John was able to make them see that the future promise was near. And if they were going to receive this promise, they had to repent. And so they came in their numbers to be baptized. Although John was way out in the Jordan, far from where they lived, they came in droves to be baptized. What is amazing is that although many came to John to be baptized, John made it clear that he was not the one. He made it clear also that this baptism that he was performing was not the end. There was one who was coming, whose sandals he was not worthy to bear. And that person will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. So his baptism of repentance was not the end of the story. Water baptism by John was just the preparation, but the fulfillment was coming, and it was coming through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire that Jesus was bringing. The Holy Spirit meant a cleansing, the fire, purification, and refining. So that when the time comes, when the king comes to take control and to judge, then persons would have been cleansed, would have been purified, would have been refined. Those who believe will be judged righteous through their faith in Jesus Christ. And those who do not believe will be cast away and be burned. And you said today, is it appropriate to give that warning like John did? Is it appropriate today to give that same warning that those who believe will enter and those who do not will be thrown into fire? And I certainly do not want you to come to the Lord and accept him as Lord and Savior of your life because you're freed of the fire. I want you to come because you love the Lord and appreciate what he has done for you. The warning is appropriate today, and especially appropriate for us who name the name of Christ. Notice John wasn't preaching out there to Gentiles and to pagans. John was preaching to the people of God. The people coming to John were people of God and they were being asked to turn to God because they had messed up. How many times we have not done what we are supposed to do? How many times have we fallen short of the glory of God? How many times have we knowingly and unknowingly do things, miss the mark? So this message of repentance is for us, the people of God. We need to repent. We need to turn around. We need to turn away from. But we also need to turn toward and turn into word is to turn toward God. If we were stealing, we might stop stealing. If we were in a relationship of fornication or adultery, we might stop. So we turn away from it. But we ain't turn towards God. We need to turn toward God so that we can experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. This is the only way we'll be able to truly bear the fruit of repentance. Because when we turn to Jesus, when we believe in him and accept him, we are baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire. And we are empowered. Because if the Holy Spirit lives inside us, then we are empowered to be able to live that life. So that when we miss the mark, we are ready to seek forgiveness. We are ready to confess and to repent. We are empowered to live lives that will reflect the change that has occurred on the inside. Furthermore, we will want other people to know. Because if you have experienced that change, and you are empowered, and you have this faith in Jesus Christ, and you feel alive, and you have peace, you want other people to, to get it also. And so you'll be empowered, you'll become bold. 
to tell others the good news. You'll be passionate for souls that are lost all around you. You'll want, you wouldn't want them to burn in the unquenchable fire. And so you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak and to tell the good news of Christ. So today, the question is, are you ready to repent from the old way of life? Are you ready to shed the bad habits? It's the sins, it's, it's a little, the little sins that trip us up, you know. The big sins we could get over, but the little things that trip us up. Are you ready to turn towards God? Remember, turning away is necessary. Turning away is important. But what you turn towards is also of utmost importance. The king is coming. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here. The power is here for you to grasp, for you to take hold of, so that you can be empowered to serve God as, we, as you should. So turn towards God today so that you can be equipped to live the new life that we are being called to live. Equipped to live the life that is worthy of repentance. A life where others see the compassion and the love and the kindness and the purity in your heart, the grace, the mercy of God. Others will see that in you and it will cause them to also repent and turn towards God. Are you ready at this Advent season to really reflect on the coming of Christ? Celebrate, yes, the birth of Christ and get excited but prepare for the coming of Christ as King. Because Jesus is coming. He's coming soon in all his glory. Not just as a savior, but a reigning king. Jesus is coming soon. And the whole world will be witness. Oh, be ready. For he is coming soon. Be ready, my people. Because Jesus is coming soon. Let us stand together as we sing, coming soon, Jesus in all his glory. Once he came to this old world of sin and sorrow, a humble babe in Bethlehem in a manger. But this time, he's coming in all his power. Great peace on earth will bow and worship his great name.
that we need to repent, to turn away from a life of sin and turn toward you, O God. May we receive that power of the Holy Spirit and the purging of the fire so that we can live lives worthy of repentance. Thank you, Lord God, and give us the strength, determination, and the mind to truly serve you. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Confirmation class follows this service. Confirmation class follows this service. Evening Manor, this Bible study is held every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Choir practice on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Prayer meeting is held on Saturdays via Zoom at 5.30 a.m. Our color offering for the month of December is green. This offering goes towards missions. We continue also to receive a walk-up offering for our building fund. Group one, Stevens, you know, we have seven groups in the church. We raise funds for the sanctuary. And group one, Stephen, the crown, presents a grand Christmas banquet and awards ceremony on the evening of Thursday, December 15, 2022, at the Kuna Conference Center in Fortlands. Tickets are available at 120 Moravian dollars. All proceeds in aid of the Ebenezer Estridge Moravian Sanctuary Restoration Project. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 states, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Group 6, Paminas, will be holding a Christmas concert here at the church on Sunday, December 11th, that's next Sunday, at 5.30 p.m. Tickets are now available. You have this nice color tickets now available for $20. So please check the leaders for this group. I think it's Brother Dale and Sister John. Also, yes, tickets are available for the, um, the banquet. And group one, Stephen at $120, you see Brother Levi just saw a ticket there. So please grab your tickets before you leave after service. Group seven and Nicholas will be having a barbecue on the lawn on Saturday, December 17th at 11 a.m. So Saturday, December 17th at 11 a.m., group seven and Nicholas We'll be having a barbecue on the lawn. There will be a homegoing service on Sunday, December. Homecoming, sorry, homecoming. There will be a homecoming service on Sunday, December 18th. <laughs> we encourage you to invite Moravians, those who have lapsed in attendance, and those who may be going to other churches to come out and celebrate with us on that Sunday. So those Moravians who are lapsed, try to invite them. And those who have gone to other churches, we invite them. Like Charles Williams, we invite him to service on the 18th, right? As a born Moravian. Group 5, Timon, will be having a bake sale after church on Sunday the 18th of December. So Sunday the 18th of December, Group 5, Timon will be having a bake sale. Christingle service will be held on the evening of Sunday December 18th. 
Sunday school teachers, please be reminded to begin preparations now. I repeat this, Christingle service will be held on the evening of Sunday, December 18th. Sunday school teachers, please be reminded to begin preparations now. We continue this year to give Christmas hampers to persons in the surrounding communities. Please bring your contributions in any day before December 18th. Contributions should include the following dry goods, tin goods, pasta, rice, beans, oats, sugar, and toiletries. Now every year we give out food hampers in our various districts. And um, the people will like to know, the receivers will like to see the church. So we are planning to have a group of Moravians to sing some carols at a particular area in Phillips, in Monilus, in Mansion, I don't know, and hopefully Tabernacle. So we are encouraging members who are interested to join this group. If you are so interested, please give your names so that we can organize the dates when we go to Phillips, Molyneux, Mansion, or Tabernacle. We won't be going to, we will not be going house to house. We will just be at one point and we sing some carols to the community. The total collected for missionaries so far is $7,395.08. Our target was at least 8,000. We are short by six hundred and four dollars and ninety two cents and I'm now making an appeal that if we can get this money before the service we'll be so happy so if anyone is so generous to give some money to mount up to six hundred and four dollars and ninety two cents we will be so happy Ushers are asked to bring the basket. There will be no service on Christmas Eve. There will be no service on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day service will be on Sunday, December 25th at 8.30 a.m. Watch night service will be at 10 p.m. on Saturday, December 31st. 2022. There will, be, uh, there will also be our regular service on New Year's Day, the Sunday, January 1st. The 2023 daily texts are now available. Large prints, $45, and small prints, $40. Please get your daily text. Don't wait until the middle of January when all is finished to ask. So please get yours before the New Year starts. Let us kindly remember in our prayer our sick and shut in members, Sister Rubilette Bell, Lucy Watson, Elizabeth Davis, Anita Hobson, Susanna Macho, Ruth Tyson, Margaret Gilbert, and Brother Samuel Davis. Also, members away at school studying. Sister Manika Webster, Rihanna Davis, Nakila Watson, Sharika Williams, Jalika Shari, and Brother Brandon Bradshaw. These are all of our announcements, <laughs> and we are asked to act accordingly as these notices affect us. As we sing our hymn, As we sing our hymn of preparation for Holy Communion, you can walk up and show in the money that you have for the missionary to, to reach our target. 
And those who will be leaving, please leave quietly as we sing our hymn of preparation for communion. Clear the path by the tune, It Is Well. The confirmation class, you can sit over here during communion. <laughs> before we continue singing. Um, group two had a great for us yesterday and um, we would like to say thank you for to all those who supported us with our great for us yesterday. We continue with um, verse two. Our Savior says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. 
We do not come to the table of the Lord because, because we deserve we it, but because, because we know that you, O Lord, are righteous and merciful. Grant us, gracious Lord, to take this bread and to drink this cup, that our fellowship with you may cleanse us from our sin, and that we may evermore dwell in you and you in us. Christ is our peace. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. He has reconciled us to God and in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. Having made peace with God and received the assurance of his forgiveness, let us now make peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord, you are holy indeed. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and the whole church receiving the same by faith be partakers of your holy body, of your body and blood to our spiritual nourishment and growth in grace. And so, loving Lord, we thank you for counting us worthy to appear before you. And we bring before you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this as our duty and service. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into your kingdom all who share in the Holy Communion so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. The hymn 253, What Can Wash Away My Sin?
take and eat this in remembrance that Christ's body was broken for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In like manner also the Lord Jesus took the cup when he had supped and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink ye all of it. For this cup is a new covenant of my blood which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The hymn, Jesus' name above all names. Thank you. 
Jesus, I thank you. You are so good. Jesus, loving shepherd, light of the branches, son of God, prince of peace, wonderful counselor, Lord of the universe, light of the world. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. give you thanks and praise that when you were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life, and may we who drink his cup bring life to others. May we whom the Spirit enlightens give light to the world. Keep us firm firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live in praise and glory to your name. Amen. Amen. We thank, we thank you, for, you feeding for feeding us, us at, at your, your table. table. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. sacrifice. And so now, Lord God, send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and to your glory. Amen. Amen. Our thanksgiving hymn and covenant hymn, rejoice and be glad. You can share the right hand of fellowship as you desire. Rejoice and be glad. Our Redeemer has come.
rejoice and be glad, for he cometh again. He cometh in glory, the lamb that was slain. So remember to repent, turn away from, and turn toward God. Hold my hand, Lord God, while I run this race. Hold my hand while I upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. <laughs> Remember.